Welcome to episode 37, year 4 of the Dusty Survival Series. We have got an awful amount to get through this month. We have fields to harvest, fields to cultivate, stones to pick. We have a meadow to mow for silage. But above all else, we have a major decision we need your help with. Good morning everybody, it's 7am in August and this is the start of year 4 for our Dusty Survival Series. We have got hell of a lot to get on with this month. I honestly don't know if we're going to get it all done. I'm just having a look at this field. Yeah, the weeds are coming up already. We really need to get the machinery up here and deal with this one. If I just spin around, I think the one over yonder, you can just see it through the trees. That's golden, that's the wheat. So we need to sort that out as well. I'm just heading up to uh, have a look at the animals because we haven't really tended to them over the last month and they've got to be in need of some food. And here they are. They're looking okay. Let's have a look in the trough. Oh, very little. Yeah, we are definitely going to need to get some grass up here. Um, let's have a quick look at the chickens before I go down and check the meadow. That's also got to be ready for mowing because we've only done one mow this year and that was back in May. Wow, we've got plenty of eggs there coming on. It's a bit stuffy in here. I'm just going to leave these doors open, I think, this morning. Uh, yeah, oh wow, we've got four, four and a quarter pallets of wool as well. So that really needs to go down to the spinnery. Oh, uh, we've got some grass there. Yeah, that's fine. So that grass can go over to the sheep. We'll deal with that shortly. Let's just have a step down to the meadow and see the state of affairs down there. Well, everything is lush and green. We've got lots of lovely meadow flowers. Great for the bees. Wow, yes, this is this is ready. Yeah. Oh, you know what? We didn't even get round to lopping the branches off the trees that we uh, we chopped down a couple of months ago. I said I'd do that and stack them to the side just so that they can season nicely before we take them down to the sawmill. Ah, oh, wow. Yeah, we have got so much to do. So we've got mowing, we've got animals, we've got a little bit of uh, forestry work to get on with. And that's before we even head down to the lower fields and we know we've got stuff to do down there. Good morning, y'all. Thanks for joining me here again in Erlingrad. I'm starting my fourth year now. And I reckon me and the computer guy have got a real good handle on things. I really appreciate all your support. If you want to go and click that thumb thing down below, maybe you want to say something to my face, just leave a little message on that typey thing. And I'm sure that computer guy will get back to you on my behalf. Anyways, we got an awful lot to get on with this month. We got a real big delivery coming later on today. But for now, I want to get some oil seed radish in this field here. I've just picked up the trailer here. I'm just going to back up, load on the wall, and then, let's just check in my mirrors here, and then I can take that down to the spinnery. There we go, just drop the tailgate there. Right, let me get this loaded on now. All done. Not a bad job. So we've got four pallets of uh, wool there. They can go straight down to the spinnery. Right, while I'm here, let's get some more grass shredded into the uh, troughs here for the sheep. Generally speaking, actually, they look pretty happy, I must say. And obviously, they're generating enough wool. This is exactly what we were looking for. So, right, let me deal with the grass, and then you can join me on my trip down to the spinnery. I've added on the honey onto the trailer as well, because that can go down to the brewery. and Make sure this is nicely strapped on. And I think at some point in the near future, we will move the, uh, the collection point for honey because we just don't need it up here anymore. And if we're using honey down in our honey beer, i.e. down at the brewery, we may as well move it down to nearer the big fields because that is where most of the honey is going to be produced. 
Can't believe it's half past eight already. Dusty and I were up at the crack of dawn this morning and hopefully he's uh, working this field. That's the thing he said he was going to work on first. Yep, yeah, there he goes. I can see him. Oh, great job, Dusty. So he is seeding that field, I think, with radish. I think that's what we agreed. So then we don't have to worry about fertilisation. Where's he gone? I think he stopped by the trailer. He might need to move it out of the way. Yeah, I think he's going to. Okay, all good. Right, just wait for this chap to get out of the way. In your own time, son. We're not at all busy here. Just don't look over the shoulders. Let's offload this wool. Get the spinnery back in operation. There we go. Easing on. There we go. Excellent. Right. Honey to the brewery. Dusty's threads needs a little bit of attention from us, although we've now got wool into the spinnery, so that will keep that going. Just don't seem to have spent much time there recently. I mean, it's a great team of staff in there. They just crack on and do what we need them to do, so that's all important. Right, we are here. Just take it easy and turn in over this rather odd camber in the road here. It does tend to rock the trailer somewhat. The last thing we want is a load of cracked, shattered glass jars everywhere. Let's go drop the honey off and then we'll have a quick assessment of the state of these greenhouses because they really are producing an awful lot of produce. And my goodness, I totally forgot about the beer. Okay, I think I'm going to have to attend to that now while I'm here. Yeah, Dusty's fine for the minute. Our big job for the day is getting those two big wheat fields harvested. But if we deal with these small jobs first, we can work on into the night and that should be fine. Checking the state of the brewery here. We have a good old raft of strawberries in there. That's brilliant. That will keep happening because we've got that set to distribute where we go in large greenhouse. There we go. So that's distributing directly. Uh, that's fine. In fact, the, the, the guys in the uh, brewery just walk across and just grab a crate as and when they need it. Uh, and in terms of honey beer, we've now loaded in nearly 3,000 litres of honey. There's a couple more pallets left at the homestead. I'll deal with that, I think, when we move the uh, export point down the road. We've got lots of barley. We are going to stick in a little bit of wheat at the end of this month when we get some from our harvest. But yeah, the brewery is doing fantastic and I am not at all surprised that we have a whole load of pallets. And there we go. Speaking of which, I will get this loaded on. I shall go and grab the guys inside. They've got a little forklift just inside the uh, roller doors there. So we'll get that loaded onto the back of the trailer here and I'll whiz that down to the bar. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. Cleared away everything. I was super surprised when I started doing this. There's a whole load of other beer in stock inside the uh, roller doors here in a warehouse. So the chaps inside brought those out as well. I haven't quite got a gauge of what's on here exactly, but we have a lot of our normal beer, our wheat beer here. We've got a pallet of honey beer there, two or three pallets of strawberry beer. It's fantastic. I'm really happy with this. Let's get these straps on. Let's just rearrange some of these. They can go over the top. And then I think that's good. Yeah, right. Let's jump on board and head this down to the bar. Just thought I'd be sensible and check the selling prices for the various products I've got on the back here. So we don't have any wheat beer on board. We do have barley beer and August is the month for selling barley. However, Honey is much later in the season, so it's more of a winter beer. It's quite sweet. It's almost festive. So actually, I'm going to take off those particular um, pallets here and leave those till later in the year to maximise our returns. And again, strawberry beer is better off being sold in October. So I think there's three or four pallets I need to take off the back of the trailer. Unfortunately, I should have checked this first. But now we know I will head the barley beer down and make a sale on the crates that we have got. So that is not too bad. Two pallets of strawberry beer and one pallet of honey beer. Okay, let's get this moved. On our way to the bar here. And I think by the time that we've done all this, Dusty should have finished seeding that field with radish. And then it's a case of cracking on with a little bit of harvesting. When I say little bit, I actually mean hell of a lot. We have arrived. Okay, I just need to uh, feed this around the back. That 
that should. Let's automatically take the straps off. 14 grand plus the thousand. And I've got two more left on the back I can't quite get to. Oh, I'm going to have to go in reverse. Okay, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. I've just slid these two up and I should be able to now jump on board and get those sold. And there we go. Another $3,200 bucks. Not a bad little haul there. Let's go and check on Dusty. Well, I think he's just giving that last little row a go over there. While he's finishing off, I'm going to grab the trailer and get the stones into the stone crusher. There we go, let's get those stones in there. We'll hold on to the lime that's created just for a month or two in case we need to do those two big fields, but otherwise that can be sold. Stone Crusher's looking okay. I might have to stick some water in here again later. And I'm back to that same conundrum about whether or not I upgrade our Bowser anytime in the future. Dust is of the mind that while we've got money, we may as well. Um, which is probably true. We can always sell the smaller one. But for now, I just want to go catch up with Dusty. I think he's waiting over by his tractor. Or rather, by my tractor, should I say. I don't know how I've ended up with the Landini today. But there's something which we're waiting on for. And until it arrives, we're kind of stuck. Dusty, have you heard anything about our delivery? Only that they said they'll be here about 10 a.m. Yeah, and it's about 10 a.m. now. Well, give it a few more minutes, computer guy. Learn a bit of patience. Those fields ain't going nowhere. True enough. Why don't we walk over to the main field? Because I know that's where they're going to drive in. Those are the directions we gave him. That's right for sure. Okay, let's head over there now. So as Dusty and I head over, I may as well explain that we are waiting on two, yes, not just one, but two combine harvesters to turn up. Now, we've ordered both. We we're only paying for one when we decide which one we want. So they're bringing two new combines, one header, because I think that's all they can fit on, and we're going to give them a trial. So. I'm hoping they will do the job because they are both an absolute steal and I'll explain that later on. Well, I think I can see him coming, you shoot guy. That little yellow thing over there. I'll tell you now, that ain't little. You wait till he turns up. And Dusty, I can see the other one as well. Oh, that is unbelievable timing. Let's get out the way. Oh, look at this, ladies and gentlemen. This is unbelievable. Look at that. A John Deere. Brilliant. I'll explain what they are very shortly. And there should be... There's the other one. Now, this one is a bit unique. So I'm interested to see how good these two are. Right, let's head over. Thank you very much. Cheers. Well, that is brilliant. Look at this one. We'll have a look at this one first. The R450 Twin Screw. Quite a unique combine. Not sure if it's what we were looking for, but it was, again, an absolute steal. Let me get you some. Oh, look, they've even put the number plates on. So this X XBR2 is 465 horsepower, and it's on the ticket price for £185,000, which for that price and that horsepower is an absolute bargain. Now, I have no idea how this is actually going to perform because obviously it's a twin track vehicle. Um, it will turn on a dime, literally. But whether that means that swinging a big header around becomes a bit precarious, I don't know. We're going to have to have a go in that in a minute. Um, the delivery driver up there, she's just filling out the paperwork, so she'll be down in a second. While we're waiting for that, our lovely John Deere header here, the HD45X. That's a big one. I think it's about 13 and a half meters wide. Or was it 13 and a half feet in old money? I can't quite remember. I'll get the details on that when I get the uh, paperwork shortly. And so this is a John Deere CR10.9. Now, 
This is unbelievable because this is coming in at under 300k. In fact, quite a considerable amount under 300k. The reason being is the company that owned this has recently gone bankrupt and this has been taken on by the bank. And obviously they just sell things at a crazy price. Now, this is up for auction. So let me go and get the details from the driver over there. Dusty is dealing with the chap who delivered this one. And let's go and have a look at what all the details are for the John Deere. Right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. I have got the uh, the sales guy's iPad here, and I'm just looking at the video, as you can see on your screen right now. Yes, the CR 10.9. And look at that price. $225,000 bucks. I'm telling you, that is probably 60 maybe even 70 percent off the ticket price this will go easily for 550 600 grand real dollar buck money 824 horsepower 55 miles per hour it is an absolute beast i think this is what we go for now it is a big outlay and the reason i say that is because just now i've just had a call from klaus telling me that he has got a deal on a top liner going for about 50 grand and there we go there's the proof in the pudding a top liner 1490 which is 310 horsepower yeah i mean it's a huge upgrade from what we've got but when you hold this instead with the john deere we've just been looking at it is nowhere near the same league but it is 57 grand this has come out of the blue because i was already sold on the john deere we do have to give the twin screw a go so I think we jump in, we do a couple of rows each, me and Dusty, see what the handling's like on these vehicles, and then we put pen to paper. But I am absolutely itching to get in there, get the header on, and give these a proper test drive. If you want to give the John Deere a ride, I'll jump in the twin screw. Ready. This is a huge piece of equipment. Let's get this underway. Right, we'll lower our header down. I think we've got the angle just right. We've got a bit of depth here. Let's bring that down. Perfect. Right, power on. No, that's engine. Power on. What's the controls? Yeah, here we go. Right, now we're ready for some power. We're already lowered. Right. Easing in. Yes, we are cutting. And we are off. Big head here. Really going to take no time at all to do these fields, whereas it took absolutely ages to do those fields before. And we are cruising at... Yeah, 9.9, .9, touching 10 miles an hour here. I'm not really paying attention to where I'm going. I'm drifting off the edge of the field, but that's not a problem. This is just a test run, and I'm already absolutely loving this. Fantastic bit of equipment. I'm just going to take myself a, a steady arc here. Just coming around... We are dropping a huge amount of swath. In fact, so neat and tidy, we probably wouldn't even need to windrow it. I'm going to do, I think, one pass, one headland, and then we will detach the header and give Dusty a go in the twin screw. reversing up here just to get aligned can't see the edge it's so wide right let's drop down so I can see where the edge is power on again and away we go what a brilliant piece of equipment very maneuverable this isn't the biggest field but yeah no problem at all absolutely churning through and there is the contender 
It's competition, the twin screw. I just think this is hard to beat, I really do. I'm coming to the end here. I'll finish up, drop the header back on the trailer and swap over. I'm trying to gauge, gauge the, the width of this thing, it's an absolute behemoth. Approximately there. Okay. I gotta say, that's one sexy combine, but I'm ready to give the XBR2 a go. Let's get a moving. Now this thing's pretty rapid. There ain't no hanging around in a twin screw. Now I actually think this header's too big for this combine. She ain't got no weight on the ass. She just wants to tip forward all the time. But let's give it a go anyway. She's got the power. And we're off. This ain't bad at all. It's real nice inside the cab. This would be a great combine for up at the homestead. Unbelievable turning circle. I watch this. Look how easy that was. I have this field done in a jiffy. Well, Dusty, I've tried the John Deere. You've tried the twin screw. What's your take? Well, I really do like it. It's a bit strange, though. Well, I absolutely love the John Deere. Yeah, I thought you might, even though I know you're a Fent guy. Yeah, I am a Fent guy through and through. I like the Massey as well, actually. I'm loving my Massey tractor. So what do you want to do then, computer guy? You want to swap over? I think we should. Let's uh, let's go and have a bit of a swap over, may perhaps get this field finished and then we'll have to make a decision because we've been allowed to test these today but that is under the promise that we will be purchasing one of them. Yeah I know that, I brokered the deal. Well let's swap over now then, while the head is on the uh, twin screw here I'll jump in and give it a go and then you can do another couple of rows in the John Deere and then we'll see what we think. Right on computer guy. I'll go grab myself a coffee while you do a couple of rolls in the field. Right, I am now in the twin screw and it's it's almost like being in a big cat, like a big caterpillar dumper. It feels far more industrial and it is certainly older. So this is um, well in the 1990s, I believe that these were these were made um, quite unique. But yeah, I mean, we've got a CB radio. You can just tell it is older. It's got lots of power. It's got that unique maneuverability. But yeah, I want to give this a go. So, engine on here. Hello, we've got ourselves an iPad. <laughs> nice. Okay, there's our field adjustment. Yeah, I will punch in all the details for the GPS at a later date. For now, I really just want to get a feel for it in manual. Um, okay, yeah, here we go. So, I'm just going to edge forward. Cool, the acceleration is quick. It's actually a bit, it feels a bit precarious the way you can just throw it around, especially with a long header on like this. Okay, let me, um, backing up a bit here. I'm going to get aligned and then I'm going to do two rows anti clockwise and just maybe have a little bit of a run around the field. In fact, I'm just going to have a bit of a run around the field here carefully. It's not too bad. I, I can feel the age. It does feel bumpy. The ride in the John Deere was 
like sitting in a lazy boy it was just super comfy um yeah this feels nice let's give it a whoa 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 no see uh, whoa okay okay yeah it <laughs> you don't want to spin this thing around too quickly um yeah that was a bit precarious okay let me uh let's back up a bit here and let's give this a go so dropping the header now power on right let's do a bit of harvesting Now I don't think the computer guy's going to like the twin screw. She's just a bit too different. I've dropped the header off and uh, Dusty will be back any minute with his cup of coffee to give the John Deere a go. Uh, I just don't know how I feel. I honestly don't. So this is, this is the epitome of modern technology. It's got comfort, it's got speed and it's going to last, you know, it's going to do us forever in all intents and purposes um, and it's brilliant I absolutely love it but I, I almost feel like it's characterless um, which is obviously not the case because just look at it just look at that thing but if I just wander back over here to the twin screw I honestly didn't think I would love this as much as I do I honestly, I honestly don't know. So, I think it's going to be down to Dusty to make a decision. Or maybe, maybe I need to open this up to the YouTube audience. Let's get Dusty in the John Deere. Let's get a result and see what we think. All right, no more messing around. I've had my coffee. I'm ready to go. Well, dang me, I just don't know, computer guy. I like both of them. Yeah, me too, Dusty, for totally different reasons as well. I like the old, traditional, but raw, grunty power feel of the twin screw, but I kind of love the modern luxury that you get with the CR-10. Yeah, I get that, absolutely. So what does it boil down to when you look at the raw numbers? Well, if you look at the raw numbers for the twin screw, the XBR2, with the 465 horsepower maxed out engine and the medium hopper, which is currently on the version that we would be buying now, the one that we're testing, you're looking at $263,000 bucks, so quite an investment. Whereas the John Deere CR10.9 is $225,000 bucks, as I said, this is easily a half million dollar machine, but the farm has gone bust, the bank is closing in, and so we've got this very rare opportunity to make an absolute steal. Well, you know what? I can't make a decision. You can't make a decision. Why can't we get someone else to do the thinking for us? Well, you know what, Dusty, that is exactly what I was thinking, and I mentioned it earlier. I think we'll ask our audience. Yeah, you ask those people on the interwebs, see what they gotta say about it. I'm sure they're all driving around in their John Deere's and Massey Ferguson's anyways. Yes, I'm, I'm sure there are, but you know, some of them are driving logging wagons and other people work in some sort of technical industry, so maybe, I don't know, but yes, I'm gonna put it out there, let's do it. So, everyone who is watching, you got the choice of the John Deere here, or the XBR2 twin screw, what would you go for? Let me know in the comments below and we can make a decision at the end of the month. Well, for now, you might as well go grab the trailer. We got to offload all this wheat and I'm going to jump in one of these two and finish harvesting that lower field. Yeah, that's right, Dusty. We've got an awful lot of harvesting to do. Enough of this. Let's get cracking. I won't deny it, I love both of those harvesters, so appreciate your help with your comments and hopefully we will be able to make a decision before the month is out and maybe next episode you will see precisely which one we decided to go for. But for now we've got an awful lot of work to do, I'm just going to bring the trailer hopefully up between these two 
We'll get the pipes extended and get the wheat loaded. jumped in the Massey I need to go and pick up the baler and the windrower and pick up all that straw before we can cultivate but once dust is finished loading off all of the wheat then we can start to harvest that other field as well Better bring some weed up to the brewery. Make sure we got that going. I am set and we are bailing. So I will churn through this as quickly as possible. I've just seen Dusty do the last run of wheat from this particular field and he's taken it straight up to the brewery, which is brilliant. Dusty's cracking on with this field with the new, uh, or possibly soon to be new, John Deere combine here. The width of the header just makes this such an easy job. I'm not doing too bad over here with this straw. Not got much to do. Once I've finished this straw baling here, I'll drop the baler and the windrower off by the field that Dust is currently working. I'll go grab the trailer and then get all of these straw bales picked up and moved out the way ready for a bit of cultivation. That is a job well done. Fair few bales on this field, obviously it's much bigger than the other ones that we've been working. So I'm going to go grab the uh, trailer as I said and get those picked up now. like to change a plan here dusty is just about to come round on his last row so i may as well just continue bailing on this field and we can then cultivate both together at the same time that proves just how quick that new john deere with the big wide header on is i mean it's rapid anyway enough chit chat let me get this lowered and we'll start picking up some straw So we had a bit of a slow start earlier while we were testing the two possible new combines but we are well underway now we are properly harvesting all the wheat is in we've got one i'd say almost three quarter load up at the brewery the rest is going into here uh, for making flour yeah and we'll continue to push our production chains to the max there's always something quite endearing about harvesting this field this obviously was Dusty's grandpa's field that was left to him in his will way back from the days of episode one. We ended up selling this field as you remember and then we managed to claim it back again. So it's had a bit of a topsy-turvy time I'd say this particular field but it's here now. It's the first big field we have ever had and worked on and it just always feels nice. It just always feels, I don't know, like an old friend. And there we go, I am done. Well done Massey, love the Massey still, absolutely love that. There we go. Build full of bales, right, let's go pick up the trailer. Right, I'm all done. Just gonna drop off the header here on the trailer. Then I think I can get on and pick up some bales for the YouTube guy. He's gonna take the Massey and start cultivating.
cultivator down and I can head off. Dusty's just finished collecting the bales on this field and he's headed up to the other one. So yeah, let's get going with this. We're gonna have to stone pick as well. I really wanna get, uh, yeah, I really do wanna get some um, radish in this field as well. And you know what? We also really want to mow our meadow. We've got a lot to do and it's only about four o'clock maybe in the afternoon. Uh, the light is gonna start drawing in soon, but we'll just keep pushing on through the night. I think it's time I pick some stones. Where goes the YouTube guy? Brilliant. I've just seen Dusty doing his uh, headlands with the stone picker. I love this teamwork. It means we get things done so much more quickly. And we have to absolutely do that now because we've got these three massive fields. Yes, we are really churning some profit now with all the hard work we're putting in. I'm hoping for a couple of quiet months coming up because we have been worked to the absolute bone through the summer months. But then again, that is the farming life. Well, that lower field is done. I am now just heading over to this one up here. Let's get the cultivation going. Dusty's catching up with the stone picker. Get this beauty unfolded and lowered. And let's get those spades in the ground. today and we've still got a whole load of work to do I've got the cultivator on board I'm going to go and drop this off then I'm going to pick up the baler and the windrower and head up to the homestead to do that meadow because we know silage makes us a huge amount of revenue in the winter so we really don't want to let that slip but there's one job I do want to do because we know we're going to be purchasing a new combine at the end of this month I think it's time we said goodbye to the old New Holland TX. There she is, sat there, looking rather forlorn, I must say. But it's, uh, yeah, I think it's time to get that sold. So I'm going to deal with this first, and then I'm going to head up to the homestead. 
Engine on for the last time, my old girl. It's been a great bit of equipment, certainly a huge upgrade on the Bison that we had originally that just didn't have enough grunt even to get up our very steep fields at the homestead. But the TX here, she's done a grand job. And the XBR2 in front of me there is one of the options we are looking at, as you know. I'm going to park this up, get it sprayed, get it repaired, maximise our profit on the sale, and let's see how much we get. So current value is 41,190. I'm going to give that a respray and a repair. Now worth just shy of 43 grand there. So goodbye TX32, you've done us proud. And now for the header, we'll do exactly the same. We will repaint repair so the headers were 15,603 again thank you TX32 header you've done a grand job but goodbye so our bank balance now is a hefty 408,473 I'm back on board the Massey and I'm just hooking up all the uh, the grass equipment that we need now while I was over at the store selling the combine I happen to notice something which is new to Klaus's uh, catalogue. So I am just going to quickly head over there now. Damn it, I thought I picked that up. Hold on one second. I'm going to head over there now. And there we go. And I'm going to show you something which, yes, I think is going to help us out dramatically. here we are back again I am going to drop off the windrower but why you may ask we've looked at the windrowers in previous episodes and you couldn't make up your mind computer guy well that's very true let me deal with this first so we're going to repair repaint and claim back twelve thousand dollar bucks happy with that thank you Samaz you've been a quirky little uh, bit of equipment but you've done a great job so we are now at $419,000 bucks. I'm just going to head in the store. Bear with me. Because within the wind rowers section, Klaus has a new rake system. Here we go, the R90. So it's basically a huge upgrade on the Samaz that we have just sold. And that is exactly what I've been looking for. Something which is wider, so therefore can pick up more grass but that we can attach to the front so we can still bail. So with this, we've got a great opportunity to pick up, bail and wrap all in one pass. And at $32,500 bucks, I think that's an absolute steal. And there she is. Now I spent a little bit more. I had money in the pocket, so 39,000 this was because I wanted her to be sprayed Massey Ferguson red. Look at that. We've now got a full red complement here for our grass work, assuming we're using the Massey and not the Landini. But look at that, brilliant. Let me get that hitched up. Let me get down to that meadow and let me get the mowing underway. It really is dark now down in the valley behind the mountains. We spend an awful lot more time down in the lower fields doing all our agriculture work, but we mustn't forget our animals and of course our grass up here. Okay, I've got everything attached. I'm going to swap everything over and get the mowing underway. It's four minutes past five in August and this month is rapidly running away from me, but I do need to get this done. Let me get the, everything unfolded and get underway. I think I'm actually going to have to uh, yeah, put some lights on here to see what we're doing. Right, mower on. Let's get that down and then get the same on the rear and then I am underway. This normally takes about an hour. Uh, yeah, so 
I'll see you back here shortly, I think. I'm pretty much done with all the stones in those fields. They're all set and ready for seeding. I'll best get on with it. The sun's dropping pretty fast now. I hope YouTube guy gets the meadow done in time. I'm not doing too bad I've just done a couple of headlands now I'm just gonna go up and down and do the bits in the middle yeah it's not taking too long not too bad at all it is getting hard to see down here but I've got all the lights on on the Massey there so not bad just having a quick climb up to the top of the hill just to get a bit of an oversight because it's easy to see if you've missed anything but yeah I think I've got everything in which case ah oh, no I haven't there's a strip here that's a pain I'll come back and sort this out then I'm gonna hook on the new windrower and the new baler give or take one month old and yeah give it a go the first time we're going to be baling and wrapping all in one hit I'm in position let me just unfold there she goes. This is the first time I've used her properly. Dropping down. Power on. The baler's already on. She's ready to wrap. So I think we will get underway. Brilliant. This is the full combination of new equipment now for dealing with our meadow. And I really want to see what comes out the back of the wrapper. Well, field 21's now done. I'm just going to go up and stick a load of radish in that other field. Then I think well, I'm done for the day. 20 past 6 in the evening and I believe I am done. Yes, everything is looking... Everything's looking good. I'm not going to borrow I'm not going to worry about picking up these bales today. I do not have the energy for that. And uh, yeah, I just wonder how Dusty's getting on. Ah, uh, it looks like one of my bales is causing a uh, a traffic jam up there. I'll go grab that up shortly. Well, I absolutely feel like that is me done for the day. I'm pretty sure Dusty would have finished whacking in the radish down on those two bottom fields by now. Sheep are looking happy. Yeah, we got some got some more wool that's still being generated quite nicely. And I know for sure in here we are gonna have plenty of eggs. So at some point we are gonna have to do a bit of a collection of produce ready for big selling day. For now, just close this up. I think we're gonna call it there. Well, what a month, ladies and gentlemen. There was an awful lot to get through, and I think we just about scraped by. I even managed to get that lower meadow mode just in time before it gets too dark in the shadows behind the mountain. Yes, all three of our big lower fields are now cropped with radish ready for next month to be churned in and we can actually get proper seed in the ground. But the big question I leave you with this month is, which of the two harvesters should we go for? Should we go for the John Deere, the CR10, or should we be going for the twin screw? I like both for different reasons. I'm sure you have your own opinion. Please stick your comments in the section below. Like this video. It's been a good one. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. There's more of these coming, that's for sure. I hope to see you all very soon. Until next time, bye-bye.